<laughs> Dude, you missed last episode. We talked about that shit. I love Clash of Clans. Really? It's about cell phone yeah. game addiction. Yeah. I know, it's real. I, I have something to tell you. <laughs> I've spent money on Clash of Clans. Like, That's it's terrible. What we talked about. I have to tell you something. This isn't a podcast. Yeah. This is an intervention. <laughs> you have a problem. Guys, I have a problem. All right? Stop whatever I want. <laughs> All right, roll the Seinfeld intro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, it's your boy Clayton Philpovich. There you go. I'm I'm not gonna drop bars to Seinfeld right now. It's Clayton and the douche <laughs> for <a> bars. <laughs> oh my god, we're such d bags. Um, I'm Clayton Philpovich. Welcome to the podcast that has no name. I'm gonna be really ashamed if that turns into the name of the podcast, a podcast with no name. I'm joined by Gus Light and Isaac Ibarra and House and in the far distance Drew Tech. What up, dog? <laughs> All right, so you guys know Gus from episode one, of course, the combat yeah, camera episode marine, two. and episode two. Not that. Yeah, you know what I And then moving over to Isaac, you met him in episode two. He is a public affairs marine stationed out of Okinawa, Japan. What? And then we also have a new guy tonight is John House with no H in his name, just to let you know. Well, in the second part of his name, not in the first part of his name. And he is from Iwakuni, Japan. He's a public affairs marine and a former radio host. And now he is a section chief of the radio department, right? Yeah? Yeah. All right. So we're just going to get right to it because we're probably like five minutes in already. <laughs> Gus, what are we talking about today? Uh, we're going to talk about first memories of movies and video games or other fun childhood memories we have so we can be deep tonight. Absolutely. Like my first like video game memories, I definitely remember playing like The Legend of Zelda on the Super Nintendo. Mm -hmm. as well as uh, Super Mario World, which is my favorite Mario. Mm -hmm. And I had a Super Nintendo, and then my parents sold it in a yard sale because me and my brother would just fight over it all the time. And then, like, the first game system I had after that was the GameCube. I got Rogue Squadron, which I remember the first mission was insanely hard, at least for a child of whatever mm -hmm. age I was. You're supposed to, like, navigate through the Death Star Trench. But in the movie, all they do is fly straight. But in this one, there's, like, obstacles... And I was like, this isn't in the movie. And we could not beat that mission. We that had was your big hang-up with the game, though? That wasn't the, the first movie. mission. Oh, okay, I got the, you. The first <laughs> mission. The first mission. Like, the first part <laughs> of the mission, like, you blow up some towers, easy. Next one, TIE Fighters. Oh, man. Still pretty easy. Right. And then you fly, it's like, set up for your attack run. And I was like, I'm with Skywalker right now. Like, I was I was a kid, I was into it. Like, like Star That's Wars is also, like, some of my first movie memories. And mm -hmm. so I'm fr flying down this trench, and then suddenly there's like walls in the way, and I'm like, "What? That was in the movie?" And I'm like, "I'm like a little kid, like really pissed off. <laughs> They're like, I don't even know curse words yet, but like, I was like, shoot, like, <laughs> shoot. like crashing into these things, and then like Darth Vader comes in from behind, and like he like, lights me up. Like I was like, how am I supposed to get past him? Like right. I don't even know. Like we had to resort to cheat codes. So, so wait, like, your first your first uh, game system was Nintendo sixty four. Is that what you said right there? No, it was GameCube. I GameCube, think. Yeah. dude. I, so what's crazy is a lot of the people listening to this podcast right now probably have no idea like what a Nintendo sixty four is. Your Believe Nintendo sixty four is my jams. What what games did you play on Nintendo sixty four? Because I I got a couple that I like. There were a lot of games that I feel like a lot of people played on N sixty four, but I had three, and I had the three clutch games. I had Goldeneye. <laughs> oh, dude, Goldeneye is the <laughs> Yep, yep, big head mode. Clutch game number one. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> Clutch game number two, Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time. I'll oh, chime in on that. Ocarina that was, of that Time. Was my grandma had that yep. in 64, so anytime I went over to my grandma's house, I got to play video games. Nice. And then Clutch game number three, the granddaddy of them all, Mario Kart. Oh, yeah. Dude, Mar I will destroy a Mario Kart. I don't care what anybody <laughs> says. I will destroy a Was Mario Kart the one, or am I thinking of Diddy Kong Racing, where like you have like the different game modes, you can like, pick up eggs and like put them in each other's baskets? You know what I'm that's, talking about? Probably. Is that Diddy Kong Racing, I want to yeah, say? Probably. That's sacrilegious, what it is. Mario <laughs> Kong is where it's at. We don't talk about Diddy Kong Racing. So, I, yeah, GoldenEye brings me back to like 1v1ing my brother. Uh, with like, and we do all the cheat, all the different cheat codes and stuff like that, like big head mode and golden gun mode uh, and all those different. And we knew all like the hiding spots and stuff like that. Actually, like a month ago, um, where we work, where I work anyway. Uh, they had they brought that in that game in and I played it and like I was like dude like I have this vivid memory of like it being like <laughs> such high end graphics and I'm like what is this shit it was just like so pixelated un unplayable it you was unplayable one yeah it was so weird to play 
I'm, I'm, gonna, be, I'm gonna drop a bomb. I've never played Goldeneye 64. What? Wow. Me neither. I'm with Arthur. That's with you. Uh, my my entire <laughs> opinion of you has changed, <laughs> dude. No, seriously, there's like no coming back from that right now. I, I, was, I told you I was about to drop a bomb. That I'll let you finish one. your fond memory before I said it. Yeah, I'm gonna let you finish, I but I'm gonna ruin your whole night. How, how, what about? At least I played Ocarina of Time. Did you Ocarina play Lion Time. King? Play Lion King? Yeah. For the N64. Wait, what? Dude, yeah, dude. Lion King game? Lion, yeah. dude. N64. Not kidding, it was one of the best games ever. What? I'm 100 percent serious about that. I probably played that when I was. I was about like, to say you fl- you slapped that in a C- Nintendo 64 right now. <laughs> and your, your opinion's gonna change about that game. I didn't even have a Nintendo 64. That's another bomb. That is. Yeah, I, I didn't have That's one even. Like, except my PS1. Like PS1. No, no, yeah. Twisted Metal 2. Yeah, yeah. Well, Let's shout out from the peanut gallery. <laughs> <laughs> shout out from the peanut gallery. So, all right. So, so your memories come from. Video games. What else did you mention? You, so you mentioned video games and movies. And movies. Yeah, you know, like like I said, um, since like, like what made getting Rogue Squadron for the GameCube, which was one of the launch titles for the GameCube, because I got it like the GameCube right when it came out, um, was the fact that Star Wars game, like Star Wars was like one of the movies I watched, like uh, like Adam on v- VHS and the box when you'd open the box. Like these these memories, it's, it's getting pretty deep in here. Right now. <laughs> Like when you open the box of these special edition VHS tapes, you it'd, make like it. a, it'd make like a farting sound. <laughs> so, being a kid, like it was just hilarious to open it up, like, and then you'd like take out your VHS, and then you'd be like, shit, I didn't rewind it from last time because I'm an asshole. And then you'd rewind it, and then if you rewind it too far, you would get at the very beginning, they had like a little uh, behind the scenes, mm-hmm. which sometimes I watched it, which actually kind of got me. I guess I could probably say that got me into like filmmaking now, and it got me really interested in it, and then. I would watch Star Wars. Sometimes I'd watch the whole movie, but most of the time I'd fast forward <laughs> to the battle scenes because I was a little kid. Yeah. And like, <clears throat> like being able to play that in a video game, and obviously like the GameCube was a pretty stellar leap from the N64 in terms of graphics. So like, right. I'm flying around like a real X wing, and like I was like loving it, like having to share with my brother. Like, that's the worst. <laughs> well, that's actually so. It's interesting you brought up memories because a couple of days ago, it's so weird that you brought that up because I was reading about. Like how the brain like can function and, and, and recall memories and, and you think that your memories are like just in the back of your brain and they're there for all time. But really, uh, did you watch Inside Out? I didn't I'm watch Inside Out. No, it was like an article one of my coworkers sent me. And uh, the interesting part about it was every time you recall a memory, especially a good memory, you have to recreate it yourself. You like build it up and you get the cliff notes and you fill in the blanks. So every time you as you grow older and you recall old memories, they seem more fonder and fonder. Right, you probably take out the bad parts. Yeah, and you're taking like, out. This is like not having a memory card. <laughs> Actually, I remember that because I didn't have a memory card, so I couldn't play Luigi's Mansion because I couldn't save it. Right, and so I couldn't even beat the first level of Rogue Squadron, so I wasn't even worried about it. <laughs> all, the, all these like five year old Gus problems right now. <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was a challenge. Like me remembering the graphics being so vivid, it's because like my mind has constructed them in a way they were never that clear, but in my mind. They were that clear. And it's really weird. This is about to get way too heavy for the podcast for tonight. <laughs> <clears throat> but I was actually like, driving in the car today. And a song came on the radio. And my mind went, the weird places your mind goes. It was like like a Fall Out Boy song. Oh, and that prompted me. <laughs> I I did. And it prompted me to go back to like my middle school years. And then that prompted me to think of like like high school dances. And then that reminded me of his dad's suicide. Wow. Really that weird. Took, that, took <laughs> really, really, yeah. really, that took a really heavy turn. Ooh. But yeah, it's just really weird that it stemmed from like a memory of a song or if I was walking past somebody outside. Oh, we, could talk, we could talk forever about memories of oh, yeah. the music. I, I got to oh, ask. Yeah. It's, it's an important question after all that. What Fall Out Boy song was it? Was <laughs> I, it like, was it like I Dance think, Dance? Or no. It was, was it Thanks for the... I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sugar We're Going Down? Yeah, it was from like <laughs> oh, Under the Oak Tree. It was like Sugar <laughs> We're Going Down. It was on my Pandora. I'll, we'll get on Pan, like Pandora. Also, yeah, uh, middle school playlist. Yeah, that? yeah. I, I was Chicago was so two years ago. <laughs> yeah, where is your boy tonight? So, <laughs> yeah, that's what triggered that. And it was like actually super happy for a minute, and then a little bit sad, and then happy again, and then depressing, and then just really interesting. You brought up memories, but yeah, I'm talking about memories and music. I mean, uh, we could probably go around the table <laughs> and get a really good story tied to a song that they still listen to today. Yeah, you know what? Yeah. I, oftentimes, your favorite song, somebody's favorite song, it comes from like a childhood <laughs> memory or like an early teen memory. Like, I, I remember, like, we'll switch up to talk about the Marine Corps a little bit. I remember when I was in boot camp, like, I was like, 
any song I could recall and was singing in my head, all of them were Disney songs. Really? All of, it was like straight up lines. So even when your brain catchy. reboots, it remembers like your childhood, like that things are ingrained in you were like the Disney songs or what? Yeah, like because like I was like because like like so you could, like try to get through time like I sing songs in my head like before I went to boot camp like if I was like taking a test I'd sing a song in my head right before the age of like everyone being able mm-hmm. to like have phones with music on them and stuff so like I would just like sing in my head like before and then I joined the Marine Corps and I was like oh I'm just gonna continue singing in my head so like anytime I was waiting like in a line standing way too close to some guy I was singing the song but like at the beginning like my memory's uh, excuse me at the beginning my memories are kind of hazy but then I remember like midway through and I was like wait I've only been singing Disney songs in my head <laughs> that's so weird like I'm just like standing there and it's like I'm gonna be a mighty king <laughs> I, I, I didn't get it or like, like singing like Mulan let's get down to business that's, that's another good one that's a that, bad yeah, like, one like, it was all like I would have to force myself I'm like no sing a Ben Sevenfold in your head <laughs> and then like I'd be singing like a metal song in my head be a marine damn it yeah like like <laughs> Be a man. You must be <laughs> swift as a <laughs> I feel like everybody in boot camp that was saying like a weird song in their head. Like I had uh, a single Destiny's Child song stuck in my head <laughs> throughout all of boot camp. Wait, which it was, one was that? It was, I don't even remember the name anymore, but it was like the ladies leave your man at home. Oh! And then like... Oh! Oh! But then the, oh. But then the best part was that like... Those were the only like solid lyrics I knew. I kind of knew the tune the rest yes. of the way. And then you so make throughout it up. boot camp, I just kind of made up lyrics to the songs. I'd be like, the club is full of ballas and they got it going on. <laughs> and like, I just yes. keep going and like, I was sort of there, but sort right. of not. And it was weird. Da, 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 da. You think you know, but you don't. Yeah. All I of boot camp. I'm not a Destiny's Child fan. I don't really like Destiny. I mean, Beyonce's, you know, yeah. queen. Sure. But. <laughs> No, I remember doing that too. That's really weird that you guys all had that same experience. I My, feel like it's because like those are the lyrics that I knew. Like maybe right, all the like, songs that I listened to, like I didn't know them, and then like I was like, I know Lion King. I think Lion I remember In Sync off the top of my head. I'm pretty sure that that, was, that kept coming back to me. And now right now I can't even recall what song, but I remember I'll, that. I always listen to Kid Cudi because just I love Kid Cudi. And for me, like my memories, you guys are saying like we go back all the way to like when you were a kid. Mm-hmm. But it was kind of weird for me because. My whole transition from um, speaking all Hebrew and everything like that, going to the United States, like everything that I knew in Hebrew, I just kind of like forgot. So pretty much my memories start from like middle school, not even elementary really, from there up. So like everything that I was seeing like in boot camp and stuff was just like pretty recent for me. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people don't know this and a lot of people watching the podcast are like people that want to be Marines or... Uh, or poolies or either like just got a boot camp so a lot of people don't know that like when you're at boot camp you're not really a person and you can't like just listen to music or have your cell phone what was the first song you guys remember like either hearing from like the drill instructor hut or after boot camp the first song that was like you know, like came on the I radio know. and you're like dude oh, what I the know. shit like what is this music going I, on right I now i remember like they came out and they're like hey you get a song list together i'm like we're gonna like play music for you get you pumped up for drill or whatever and I was like, okay. So I put on a, this, this is a good one, uh, God Hates Us by <laughs> Avenger Sevenfold. Which I, a have, good one. I have a very specific memory of the time I first heard that song. Because I was kind of apprehensive to listen to it for the first time. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll talk about that in a second. But then, so I put that on the list. And he plays that one first. But first we ran out of the shower. So I ran away from the music that I was playing. <laughs> and I wanted to hear it because the guitar riff is just uh-huh. so heavy. And, like, for me, I like, I like really heavy metal music to pump myself up. Because I know, like, people listen to rap and, like, some people listen to pop to pump themselves up. But, like, I listen to metal. So, like, the, like I heard the guitar riff start playing because, like, it starts off really, like, slow. And you're, like, kind of, like, this is a song called God Hates Us. And then it picks up and goes, bam, da, 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 and it starts playing. And, like, you're just, like, yes. Like, at least if you're a metal fan. Other people would probably right. get, like, scared. <clears throat> but, so, like, I heard that and it starts playing. And they're, like, okay, get in the shower. It's like, no. And I had to run away from this music. And then, like, I come back, and it's the end of the song. And the end of the song ends the way it began, which is a really soft, like, <clears throat> guitar lullaby kind of thing. Right. So I was like, oh, man, yeah. I miss, like, my favorite song. So that's what you – House, what do you remember? John Without Nature. Um, <laughs> when, I was, when, I was in, uh, when I was in boot camp, because my last name is House, I was the company first sergeant's House Mouse. Nice. Um, <laughs> instead of picking the smallest recruit, he picked just House. And that was a terrifying job. Uh, and I went up there. <laughs> wait, wait. What's a house mouse, by the way? In case I don't know. All right. So a house mouse is a recruit that is picked to go into the senior drill instructor's hut in a boot camp platoon and clean it. 
Uh, and so Company First Sergeant's house mouse is a guy that goes to the first sergeant in the entire <laughs> company and cleans his, so he's above senior drill instructor. And so I went into his hut to go clean it, and uh, he's not there, and it's like the chief drill instructor, and I'm cleaning, and then he played this like, really really aggressive rap music like <laughs> like like they made dmx look like a like a giant pussy like i was just like and i don't know what it was i don't know what it was you know i, I probably listened. stitches yeah you know, like it was it was very aggressive and i'm like cleaning and it was like the first music i'd heard and then the chief drill instructor just looked at me and he was like, Bob your head. So I'm just bobbing my head to this song as I'm playing. Bob your head. And then he's just like, Stop bobbing your head. And I'm like, Stop bobbing my head. But that was the first that was the first semblance of music I heard in boot camp. That's funny. Wow. For me, there's two. There's two distinct memories. And one was about like halfway through boot camp. So you're really jonesing for like anything you can get. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> my heavy hat went into the drill instructor hut. Oh wait, wait a moment. What's up? Why don't you explain to the audience? <laughs> <laughs> so your heavy hat. It's my part. That, so, <laughs> so your heavy. No, that's actually a good point. Uh, if, tell me if I'm doing this wrong. If I if I get this wrong, but your heavy is basically the dude that like is like the worst one, and he comes down on you the hardest, and he trains you the most too. <clears> he does. Yeah, he trains you the most. That this drill instructor is like around you all the time. Typically, he is working his way. Like, the dudes that are senior drill instructors, they did, like, two or three years as heavy hats until they got to the point where they could be a senior drill instructor. So, anyway, basically, it's, like, the most hellish mother lover that you still dream about at night when you go to bed. And, anyway, the heavy walks into the hut, and I'm, like, scared to death of this guy. Like, like terrifying, right? And then he starts playing, like, Paramore. Like the softest paramour, yeah, play, but yeah. I got him and I want him. Exactly, <laughs> and like I could see him through the blinds, like, and I got him and I want him. And I'm just like, what? <laughs> yeah, and so I was like, dude, dude he was sensitive. He was very sensitive. <laughs> yeah, and he's just in there crying. <laughs> so I, like, he's probably gonna hold me down. But like that was like my first experience. So on the one hand, I was like, oh yeah, music. On the other hand, I'm like, my drone charger is a giant pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Not really though. He's gonna come hunt me down. Um, and then the second song was, we got out of boot camp. We got in the car with my family. We're we're driving towards the gates. I'm like, floor it, mom. Go go go. And I hear, I thought the world Not was ending. Joke. No, actually, oh. I wish. That's a, that's a solid guess, I guess, out of the whole <laughs> span of music. But it was, um, what's the Asian guy? Uh, so Gangnam style. Yes, Gangnam oh, yeah, Gang style. Uh, Bro, I was like, I was like. What the? Am I in the United States anymore? Like, how has this ever risen what? to power? What? what? <laughs> <laughs> I, re I remember the first time I heard that song. I had just gotten out of boot camp, and I was at this Halloween party with all my high school friends. And that song comes on. I'm like, okay, you know, we're dancing, we're stuff, having a good time. And the beat drops, and everyone starts doing the, you know, token side dance. <laughs> right. And I like, I was there. I felt like Captain America, like coming back to the future, like when he gets unfrozen. And I was like. This is in 1945 Germany. Right. Like, what's going on? Like, I, wait, was, wait. I was like, I was like, wait, this is a song you guys all know. Like, Did you just compare your friends to Nazis? Like, <laughs> no. Like, I, I in 1945 Germany, and you I was, guys. I was are... comparing myself to Captain America. We're also aging ourselves as such boots right now. I'm sure I'm gonna get a bunch of comments that are like, "You went to boot camp when Gangnam Style was a thing." Like, to a lot of people, they're like, they're like the 08. Boots. Yeah. To, there's people that come in and out of the Marine Corps. They're like, they're probably gonna be like, these boots, like. They're talking about fond boot memories when Gangnam Style was out. <laughs> but yeah, like, like everyone started dancing to Gangnam Style and doing the dance. I was like, wait, is this like a thing? Like this isn't just a random song? Like this is like a big thing? And apparently it was. I yeah. remember when I first got out of boot camp, um, gotta pick, pick my words carefully here. <laughs> there was a famous and popular Jay-Z and Kanye West song about being in Paris. <laughs> and... Uh, and uh, and like I went into boot camp right before it got released, and when I got out, it was like old news to everybody again. And like I heard it, and I was like, I like this song. This song's great. And then everyone's like, Oh, turn that off. And I was like, No, I never got a chance to like it. Right. House is over here just like vibing to like, like yeah, Dre and Jay Z. And everyone's like, When I got out, the new album from Drake came out. Nothing was the same. And then everybody was like playing it. And I was like, Yeah, it's all right. But since I haven't heard music in like three months, I thought it was the best thing. And I hear it now, and I'm just like. 
this is actually really bad, and I don't like it at all. <laughs> Yo, Isaac's such a boot, though. Like, oh, he came out <laughs> with he's, he's a like, <laughs> Oh, man. All right, so so that was actually a good topic. I enjoyed memories. So my topic, I have, I really did not prepare for this podcast, and I apologize. It's my fault. However, mm-hmm. my time. Yeah, mm-hmm. One asshole. Oh, wait, I'm getting a bunch of interference on this. What the heck? Someone there left their go. phone on. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, the topic I have is gun control and guns in general. Oh, guns. What is, Ooh. yeah. It's a heated <laughs> oh, topic. Right. It's a heated topic. We'll go around the table real quick. We'll talk about uh, opinions. We're going to throw it over to John without Nature. I just have an interesting point is in that um, there are like two copies of the Bill of Rights that are both kind of looked at as original. And they're absolutely identical except except for one small thing. And that small Amendment. thing <laughs> is in the Second Amendment. And that small thing is a comma. And in one of them, it has a comma, and the other one doesn't. And that comma changes everything, because in one of them, it simply means a militia. It simply uh, means the National Guard. And right. in the other one, it means a militia and private citizens. So, like, this whole gun debate, actually, when they go up to the Supreme Court, there are literal arguments about that comma placement. Wow. And I've always found that Damn. interesting, that punctuation has shaped, like, 50 years Damn. of gun control debate, because... Either a guy put a comma in when he wasn't supposed to, or he straight up forgot a comma and wow. caused a lot of a That's lot of debate. Crazy. Thanks, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> damn, that, I did not know that. That's cool. Damn, damn. That Daniel. <laughs> damn, Daniel. There he is to... again with a bad grammar. <laughs> That had to come up once. That's like, that's, like, that's like the meme. Like memes have started out pretty good for 2016. I mean, we got except damn going, Daniel. I don't damn. understand how that became a thing. I don't understand. You know, if you watch, I haven't even Ellen, seen it yet. The thing you got the a lifetime on, supply of bands. The thing on Ellen was actually pretty funny because, like, I got respect for him. Like, even though it's a really stupid meme, and people are always like, "Don't make stupid people famous." But these are like, like literally, they're 14 to 15 years old, and they get on Ellen, and one one of the kids is like. Yeah, this kid came up to me and he just said "damn Daniel," and we just like, and then like we put it on Snapchat. People thought it was funny, and so we just kept doing it every six period by the pool. And, <laughs> and then like the guy who does the "damn Daniel," he's like, "Yeah, I just kind of went up to him and did a funny voice, and like it caught on." What and girls the heck? Liked it. Yeah, and he and like like they were funny because he goes like, "Yeah, girls liked it," so we just kind of kept it up. So I was like, "I, I respect your game. Like, <laughs> you're, like, you're random fourteen year old kids getting famous. Like that I'd makes no them, sense." I'd rather, I'd rather be famous than Kanye West and Kim Kardashian. I, I, I agree with that, but those kids can pay the bills with that that one like That's five true. second. Okay, the Cliff Notes version, which is really the whole yeah. version, is a guy walks up to another kid and the kid's wearing white sneakers and he goes, Damn, Daniel, back at it again with the white bands. He does it in a pretty funny <laughs> voice, too. Okay, yeah, we'll give him credit on his voice, but there's Daniel. no reason that should have like a billion <laughs> no. views on the internet. Yeah, it really like, I feel like memes are kind of weird now. Like, I feel like only the stupidest yeah. things go viral. Yeah, like, I don't understand. What, what was for Dan Daniel? It was oh, so 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 dude. So, oh, so, oh, I still do that. It's oh, the worst God. thing in the world. No. <laughs> it makes it. I just rage when I hear that. Just what is this? <laughs> I didn't see the, that until a couple weeks the ago. The only thing that makes it funny is because there are people that pointed out something we all do and say. Like everyone, that's true. Everyone like walks past a stranger that are like a, like a, an acquaintance, like somebody right. over the know. They're just like oh, so dude. I literally like, did that to like tech the other day. I was like, so, dude? Yeah, yeah like, we, <laughs> all, we all do it. That's the reason it's famous, because we all do it, and these guys pointed it out as, like, this is, like, what every white guy says to, like, <laughs> his, like, acquaintance that he isn't really friends with. They all say, so, so dude, like, The one dude in the video looks like he's having an allergic reaction to shellfish. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so it's like, so, dude? Anyway, I say that, like, I, I game, and I live stream my gaming, and I say that probably a thousand, between <laughs> Damn Daniel and Sud Dude. Dude, it's, yeah. been a, it's been a good 2016 for memes. And we got it a has new Drake been. song. We're only two already, months in. Yeah, like, like we already got a new Drake song, which a bunch of memes have been coming from that. Yeah. Kind of like Hotline Bling, they were like, oh, when you like burn your finger on a stove, as Drake making a funny face. Bro, how the hell did we get here from gun control? Oh, I don't know. What? I thought, oh, <laughs> I'm talk about, I feel like The amendment? Like, and the then... amendment comment, I said, damn Daniel. Damn Daniel. Control. So back, back from the tangent. <laughs> <laughs> back from the 10 minute well, what tangent. tangent. What back a tangent. to serious debate. <laughs> Did you imagine if Congress is like this? <laughs> I'm sure Congress is like this. Dude, can you wait? I can't wait until our generation gets to Congress and they're just sitting there like posted up, vibing to Drake, and they're like, damn, damn. And they're like, they're like, like in Snapchat, it's like, 
<laughs> just and, 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 and the caption is like, you know, like, Paying the bills, <laughs> writing the bills, oh, man. still getting paid. <laughs> I'm getting that paper. Oh my god, I, I don't even know what I, why I wanted to talk about guns, but a lot of people ask me about two two questions. They ask, what do they, ask? they say, hey, they say, hey, 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 hey. well, not that aggressively, but they say, hey, what do you think about gun control? And then they ask me, what guns do I have? <laughs> yeah, I have a uh, cell phone right now. I'm recording on. Oh, well, like, well, you don't have a mic on your, like... No, my mic isn't going to work. It, didn't, it wasn't the right microphone. I have to order one more off of Amazon. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. I, well, I, sorry, I brought that up. Continue your story. No, no big deal. So... I just want to make sure, like, you're a part... Like, if you're part of the podcast, <laughs> didn't show up... I'm sure my really audio awkward. sounds like... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure my audio sounds like trash, but it's all right. We'll fix it in, po- okay. we'll fix it in post. Okay. That's so, right. what was I saying? Oh, crap. Oh, yeah. So, to answer the first question... Um, what, what do they ask you about gun control? So, what do they ask me? They ask me about... They say, what guns do you have and what's your position on gun control? And I come from central Pennsylvania, which is like straight up hit country. Everybody's got a gun. I've just been raised around it. So, <clears throat> I mean, if y'all walk into my house right now, I've got a loaded XDS 9 millimeter <clears throat> as my centerpiece, like a decorative piece. But you it's stay, loaded. It's condition one. You stay straight. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I stay straight. <laughs> DMX would be proud. And then over here, in that room over there, I've got a, uh, a MMP-15 assault rifle, also condition one in the corner. My wife is on her way over right now to the house, and she carries a Ruger three eighty. Um, so, yeah, those are the guns I have. And I have a couple bunch of, like, 12-gauge shotguns. And- so you're probably anti-gun, right? Yeah, so like what I want to say is I think we should really, really petition you guys to get guns off the street. <laughs> But yeah, to answer your second question, I love guns. I think everybody should have them. Yeah, I'm kind of the same with you in terms of like how I was raised. Mm -hmm. Because like I was raised upstate New York, middle of nowhere, definitely nothing like the city. Right. And my my mom's side of the family lived in Vermont and like they're all all my mom's brothers, all my uncles are straight up mountain men. One of one of my uncles is the constable of his town. (laughs) Wow. Like So a cop anyway. So So he's a cop. No, he's not. No, a cop. He's, he's the constable. Oh, he's a constable. He works at a fifth hat. So a cop, a cop is a constable on patrol. He's just a con- he's just a constable. I don't know what a constable. I don't is. know either, guys. Oh, it sounds like some wild west. Somebody stuff, educate though. us, please. Like, I, like, does he have a star? No, he doesn't. But he has a bunch of guns. <laughs> <laughs> so he's got all he's the power a, he needs. He's just a guy with guns in a small town. I've been shouting out the constable now, <laughs> and they're like, I ain't gonna tell him he's not. He's got thirteen guns. <laughs> Well, to like caveat to like, oh, he's not God. the only one with guns in like in Vermont. Like Vermont's pretty like rural. Right. Everyone has guns in Vermont. It's like he hunts. He's like he he's like w- almost like one hundred percent self sufficient. Like he has chickens. He has pigs. Like the only thing he doesn't have is like cows. Like he has like his own little farm. He hunts his own food. He hunts deer. Obviously, like he's like almost like one hundred percent self sufficient in terms of like like food and stuff like that. Yeah. He's like so. a conservative hippie. <clears throat> well, almost. Yeah. With, with a bunch of guns. With you know, a bunch like of that. Yeah. yeah. A conservative hippie. Conservative. Yeah. yeah that, it's that, like that, a hippie on the right. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. So like a, a lot of my family is, they're all like my dad's a cop. So, you know, so you're all about it. Yeah. You're, you're cool it. with it. Yeah. All right. So what about you, John? Um, I'll probably differ a little bit. I'm more in the middle. Mm-hmm. I think that, um, I think that, um, most people would agree that, well, only, only the left and right exist. There's no middle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm in the middle. I'm in that nice, fine gray area. Um, I would like to say I'm in the middle, too. That there are reasonable restrictions that some people should make on, on guns. Uh, yeah, you can't, you can't be honest. And that no, there, I there are certain that. people that shouldn't have them. There are certain guns that maybe shouldn't be out there. To what degree at that fine line is, I don't know. That, com- I, I, that I, comma? I, like, yeah, like, I don't, I don't know. Like, That's the hard it, part, though. Like, what gun sh- – I think the hang-up is – what guns shouldn't be out there? I think everybody like is totally on board. Like, yeah, Isaac, a uh, twelve-time convicted felon, should probably not have a gun. But what you said, like, what guns should we have? I think semi-auto, totally game. Like, so, like quote unquote assault rifles. High powered rifles. <clears throat> High powered rifles. Sure. <laughs> Whatever you want to call it. Like seriously though. As a, as opposed to a low powered rifle. Yeah, as opposed to an airsoft gun. <laughs> that's, all, yeah, that's, always, that's always my favorite. It's like the terminology people like anti gun people use. Right, right. Like like I said, like he like he has a very like middle view, which I, I would also agree. Yeah, I respect that. I'm I'm in there. Yeah, I'm yeah, in I'm line with that. I'm definitely more in the middle. Like you always have to find a compromise. <clears throat> yeah. Uh but before I talk about that, I'm gonna read the definition of constable. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Let's hear it real quick. <laughs> From my boy Tech over there. 
my, my silent guy who's going to chime in with awesome information, handed me his phone with a definitional constable. It is a noun. An officer of the peace, having police and minor judicial functions, usually in a small town, rural district, etc. What the hell? Which is like the exact so, definition. Of guns. <laughs> so he's, he's a dude with a lot of guns and kind of named himself Town Cop. Well, I don't know. That's I, so I, weird. That's awesome. That's that is pretty yeah, awesome. Yeah, like that's what like when he, like my mom told me that. I was like, yeah, Uncle John's a con- <laughs> constable of his town. And I was yeah, like, Uncle John. <laughs> like what? They did a um, they did Sounds a poll like a on during a Quentin Tarantino movie. <laughs> my constable. Yeah, Uncle John, he's the constable of the town. Like, yeah, I could be in hateful eight. I could have been in hateful eight. Wow. <laughs> they um they did a poll on gun safety uh, with the general American population. They did a lot of polls. Um, sure. And what they found is 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 that as polarized as each political party is on the gun safety stuff, ninety percent of America agrees on about ninety nine percent of gun laws. The just the problem is is that those laws that they would actually agree on can't come into place because of the polar extremes. Yeah, yeah. Taking the media game or the political game, <clears throat> making it this sort of entertainment fiasco, totally misconstruing what each other side wants, mm-hmm. and then nothing gets done. Right. So you know we don't think that convicted felons should have guns and crazy people. Sure. Um, yeah, I feel like gun laws are pretty moderate as they you, are right you, now, well, especially in Maryland. This place is. Probably next to California, some of the strictest gun laws. Like, there's a seven day wait time. Uh, if you have anything on your record, even a little spot, like, no way are you going to get a gun. Uh, and if you and if you do have a very valid reason to conceal carry, you have to apply for it. And even then, you probably like. I know, I know, I've rape victims that have applied for conceal carry permits and been rejected, mm-hmm. or people with stalkers. Even like that's pretty much only if you have like an active stalker. Can you? That hasn't been prosecuted. Can you? It's 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 very political. It's very crazy. Uh, my hang up is uh, a lot of my friends, a lot of your friends, I'm sure, are either finishing college or in college mm-hmm. still, right? Yep. So, and on these Not campuses, sure, yep, yep, yep. We all nodded. Everybody, yeah, everybody's nodding <laughs> right now, completely agreeing with Clayton, <laughs> unanimously. I feel like an old man. My friends are all out of college. Really? <laughs> <laughs> How old are you, John? 26. Oh my god, grand old men of the Marine Corps over here. Yeah. So, uh, these I'm these 21. kids. <laughs> I am 21. <laughs> um, so, like, what was I going to go on the tangent on? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, these kids will post on Facebook and they'll be like, guns are horrible. Like, I can't believe they have military grade weapons. I'm like, you realize, like, what is a military grade weapon? Yeah, like, like, yeah, I was about to M9 that is a military grade weapon. <laughs> and everybody, anybody can have an M9. Like, the M9 that's is just a handgun. Yeah. yeah, it's a 9mm ammunition. I'm like, military what are you talking grade about? Weapons. Well, that's the, that's the problem is, is what guns actually are, what kinds of guns there actually are, and what they actually do. Just like on the opposite spectrum, they have this very uneducated view of what gun laws actually are intended to do, what people don't want to do with gun laws. A mm-hmm. lot of people on the left. That would be like, let's have gun safety. They don't want to take your guns away. They don't have any want to do that at all. I mean, hell, a lot of them are like, yeah, cool, have a gun, rock and roll. So, like, it's that problem of each side is demonizing the other side, but they don't actually have an educated view of what the other side is trying to say. Well, what I find funny is I find that my liberal friends will be like, I believe that military-grade weapons should remain in the military and we should trust them. And I'm like, bro. I was in the military, and I know 18-year-old Schmuckatelli, and that dude sucks with a rifle, <laughs> flags everybody on the range, and has probably been in the range, like, one time. So they, th- they have this, like, godlike perspective of the military in a way that they think, like, they're so overbearing. Dude, people are people are people. Like, your brother or sister, your mom or dad could all be in the military, but for some reason, they, just, they, just have, they have this, this like, uh, all-encompassing trust that, and then what makes it equally weird is my liberal friends will be like, it should be in the military. But then the next day they'll be like, the military is too strong. They're too powerful. They're going to come <laughs> yeah. bust down our those door. Are, those are like the, uh, I see what you're those are like the Jade Helm people too. Yeah, it's Jade like the Helm. Both sides. I get mess- Okay, real quick and like total Cliff Notes version because we're getting on a really big tangent. Uh, oh, dude. Tangent. This is a tangent of a tangent. We're just going to call this whole episode tangent. and. <laughs> That should that should be the name of the podcast. The next one's called Tangent. Coast I like that, bro. Hey, welcome to the Tangent Pod. What if we did? 
What's the deal with the Tangent Podcast? I can't do it. Oh man! I like that. I like the Tangent Podcast. Yeah, I dig it. Well, we'll we talk just about it. on another Tangent. Yeah, about sorry tangents. about that. So, so, so Cliff Notes version of no, Jade Helm. Tree. Is it Jade Helm? Jade Helms? Whatever the heck I it is. You brought him up. Don't ask me. Jade Helm. Yeah, basically it's what Texas exercise. That yeah, they had a, they had like a U.S. Army exercise in Texas that they do like every damn year mm-hmm. and they just go in they do some stuff they fly helicopters everybody goes thumbs up you do it a good job yeah <laughs> the helicopters work and cool and then they go home and and all of these these people that are are convinced that the government's going to come get them mm-hmm. um were convinced that obama's going to come take their guns <laughs> with the military and and so like they thought Jade Helm was like the tip of the spear for you know all the craziness, <laughs> no, and like he's like colonels would go to these town halls and be like, guys, seriously, we're just like practicing some stuff that we might do overseas, and they're just like, no, you're not. And like, yeah. what proof do you like? Seriously, like we're not doing anything, and they're like, you're gonna take her, and then now like now they all think we stopped them. Like they don't think like oh I guess we were wrong. They're like they we them. showed them, you know, we knew. I feel like it's – I think it's uh, absolutely – I'm 100% being skeptical of the government and of the military. But, man, when you're just a random, loco, crazy mother lover in the middle of Texas thinking that that we're going to take over Texas, I don't, I don't know. So I don't we're know. just too sensitive. Anyone in Texas right that. now is like, what do you mean in the middle of Texas? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that – all right. So I feel like that wraps up my topic of guns. Guns pretty good. We went, we went from gun control to – the Constitution to Jade Helm, so to memes, to memes. We, had, we had a meme tangent, and we named the podcast. I don't know if we should do the tangent podcast or the enlisted. Well, if we do, can we do the enlisted tangent podcast? Because I feel like we gotta have a military hook in there somewhere. Sure, we'll, I'll go with that. We'll discuss. My people will talk to your people. <laughs> yeah, I'll have my yeah. my agent uh, talk to you. We'll get the. <laughs> <laughs> Isaac chimes in. Isaac's getting paid $400 an episode by the way and he just sits here and goes uh huh yeah. Yep, yep. yeah I feel it for an all audio <laughs> for an audio only podcast all he's done is pass notes and make hand yeah. signs <laughs> I'll I, go on a quick gun tangent though dude he's been sitting there go. for 45 minutes doing a jerk off motion I'm not sure why <laughs> oh my leg just, I, <laughs> I'm just it's kidding. a bad I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so anyways alright I know people are real big are real sensitive like I said before but where I come from, like in Israel, if you're a service member, you carry your get on you like 24-7. You strap with gats. You, you, you strap with gats like everywhere you go. They have like P90s because that's like their standard issue, which I think is pretty freaking cool. And <laughs> they um, like go beyond in civilian clothes with their guns just sling like, you know what I mean? Going hmm. around, just walking around town shopping or whatever. And I don't know. It's just like it's for 21. I, yeah. And, and I, thought, I, thought it was, <laughs> I thought the Marine Corps was going to be the same way. Like you're going to get your own rifle and stuff like that. But the only time I shoot is when I'm on the range. And, and I'm that's, a, that's a weapon that's rented out to you. Too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's not, it's not mine. Well, you got to understand Israel, though, because or understand the culture that's over there and how different it is over here than it is over there. Because Israel is surrounded by people that are like, we will murder Israel. <laughs> and like they're just like, all right, well, we should probably all have guns for the one crazy time where they're just like, it's in. Today's the day. We're murdering so that they're ready. Whereas like here... Canada is pretty cool, so you <laughs> yeah, know that's true. we don't really have a problem with Canada or Mexico. They're pretty chill. Like, I don't really see Canada just being like, "Hey, riding in on." I hope or they, something. I hope they straight up no ball. Like, yeah. I, I hope, I hope your straight up no balls of Canada, <laughs> like, okay. inspires this huge, huge takeover of the United States. Well, I, I hope not, because I'm right on the Canadian border. My town is. I oh have yeah. To, I have to fly home. You It'd know, be red, the tip red of I remember red this dog, awesome like, episode. Like, <laughs> you'd be, you'd be, you'd be <laughs> Yeah, you'd be front no, line, can, I be, can I be uh, Patrick Swayze? Yeah, Original sure. Red Dog. Sure. Oh, okay. Go. Sure. <laughs> ghost. Yeah, you can be Patrick Swayze yeah, and Ghost Swayze. on the front lines like, guys, think about this. And then they just walk right through you. Um, so that, so what you actually mentioned a good point. A lot of people ask me all the time, like, hey, um, so, you know, when I join the Marine Corps, like, do I get to keep my M16 or what? Like, I just walk around, nah, you know, man. Best Buy with it or what? No. Like, that's a huge misconception. It just stays at the armory and you get it whenever you go do whatever – I mean, train or whatever. Right, and if you have a personal weapon, what happens with that? Like, if you if you I, if I were to, to buy it into the armory, right? Yeah, you have to shed in the armory, yeah. and then like that doesn't even work. Even like, a paintball well, gun. Yeah, I just looked this up for my class today, actually. 
Um, so if you have a personal firearm and you want to have it on base, it's actually base commander's discretion. Mm -hmm. um, and so there are certain bases where they're cool with you just having it at your home on base. Mm -hmm. um, now there's certain restrictions to it, obviously for safety reasons on a military institution, they gotta be secure. But there are some bases that allow it and some don't, and it's just the base commander's discretion. So I actually that's, that's from uh, someone living on on base housing, but in the right. barracks, it's like no. Oh, so I mean, the, oh yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, let's be real here. They talked about giving like duties <laughs> in the barracks, like yeah, the duty doesn't weapons. Have guns. I'm sorry, but if I had a pistol oh, at two a.m. Yeah. and I'm bleary eyed, tired, don't. Yeah, yeah like I'm sitting don't. there spinning it on <laughs> yes. my finger. I'm just sitting there looking at my guy. I'm like, I'm gonna be dirty here. You right. be the criminal. Ready go. Yeah. Make a move. <laughs> so uh, th there's three points. I want to make the first point is no you cannot have guns in the barracks people ask me that all the time yes they have to be stored in the armory uh even so so john lives on, on base housing and he knows the ins and outs and he's right it's base commander's uh discretion i know uh in the air force because i work for the air force i remember hearing a couple weeks back that somebody in a base commander in texas is now allowing everyone on base uh, to carry open carry and conceal carry weapons Ooh, all over base. Ain't that's that crazy? Big news. Yeah, that's dude. It was huge, and the air and like Air Force didn't really make any mention of it. It was just it wasn't even didn't even make the news. Like you would think that'd be like a CNN yeah, headline. Yeah, like I saw a few uh, <clears throat> like Facebook posts like airmen can conceal carry like yeah. whenever they want, and I was like, that's pretty cool. Like I'm surprised I haven't heard about that. Yeah, it's like, crazy that the Air Force are the ones yeah, being right? the most <laughs> open about it. Uh, yeah, Marine Corps wise, barracks life, dude. There's no way you should have a no. freaking weapon in your barracks no. room. There is no people reason. be getting crazy. <laughs> oh yeah. If they were like, here's your weapon, and good luck, I'd just be like, just. Uh, oh, I'd do God. stupid stuff. Especially with all the crazy dudes you have in the Marine Corps, like just not like. There'd be dudes Young are, guys. There'd be like these 18 year old guys that are yeah. real like hyped and they'd be like, hey, stop drinking. And if some guy was like, no, they'd be like, shoot him <laughs> yeah. in the face. So, it'd, be like, it'd be the Wild West. <laughs> so that's an interesting point though. So, we're, so right now, all of us being Marines, all of us know how Marines operate. Hey, good job, tech. We got that out of here. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. So like, we all know how Marines operate and we're vehemently against having them in the barracks, but in the civilian world, we're like, yo, he's 18 years old. He can own a firearm. Why not have a shotgun in his room? So it's just really interesting parallel <laughs> yeah. we just made yeah. for ourselves, contradicting ourselves almost. But well, we all know how Marines are. We they, do know, they, yeah. And they get a little are, squirrely. Yeah, no, really. And everybody thinks, that, especially on duty, I 100% side that we should not have weapons on duty unless you're an officer or a staff, like even staff NCOs. And probably. even they <laughs> like shoot their own foot sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There are a lot of reports like all like this, this yeah, be <laughs> <laughs> Like if you like even the officer stuff. <laughs> Like, I get it if it's, like, that guy that's, like, in charge of multiple barracks and he's at building one and you give him a sidearm, I'll be like, all right, cool, you know? It's right, like, right. what's he gonna, what's he going to do? But, like, some rogue, like, corporal that's, right. like, 20 years old in the barracks and his buddies are, like... No. Yeah. Let's be real. Be, 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 exist. We have like PMO, so like what's the point of duty? Like the duty is in chucks, so you're like it's hard to move, one. And two, you're not stopping anything without like a weapon or anything. So I don't even know why they have duties. Yeah, like the they'd, be, they'd be like watching. It's literally just to make us move. But then an equal like, duty would be kicking in their door like M9 <laughs> <laughs> in hand, like, hey, you better turn that shit down. <laughs> <laughs> but that's an equal argument to be held at you you said, Yeah, but we have PMO, but then what makes PMO different than anybody else also? You know what I mean? I guess it's true. Months because PM, I, I, I mean, I, know, I they suppose. They just tell me but, you're on duty, and I go, okay. Right. But right. Like, they at least have been like, here's what you cannot do. Right. Let's practice. I, I guess they do practice more, but but even still, like I know, I, I don't know. There's such a. You're right. There's a hazy line. It's hard to figure out like where you have to stand. But is this the part of the podcast where you'll like stop all of it and just have like, a clip from the Blurred Lines music video? <laughs> <laughs> Blurred Lines. Yeah. All right. S solid. We'll get pinged on the copyright and we won't be able to podcast. If you do less than ten, if you do less than seven seconds, I think it's like fair use or something. No, that's not true. There's actually a lot of uh, misinformation around copyright. That was true. Yeah. All right. Well, let's <laughs> talk about copyright, I, guys. I, I, <laughs> I figured because I am often wrong. <laughs> Here's what I know about fair use. <laughs> oh, I've, I've, I've cited it many times at work, and every time I've been proven very wrong. <laughs> so I've learned just stop acting like you can use other people's yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Essentially, get get permission, and because I've seen firsthand uh, as a videographer, dudes get sued 
over use over over ripping a track, putting it on a video, and then either monetizing it or uh, trying to sell it off. And that's a huge no no. And then uh, like that happens all the time through YouTube, but people don't typically get prosecuted. Even like even on well, YouTube's got like a really good system. Well, uh, arguably, where, like, we. Oh, well, okay. Yeah, I get. I don't know like the full details. I'm sure there's some really bad copyright stuff where there's some injustice going on, but I know like sometimes if you try to upload it. It'll just be like this is copyright stuff you can't upload. It. Sorry. Yeah, and, and like, then you can like, prove like, you have the copyright, but like, that's you like can, the only yeah. thing like, which I think is pretty fair. It's like instead of like you putting it up and like it gets a bunch of views and then they come at you like wanting money, it's better that they just like sorry you can't use it. Like yeah. YouTube has detected you're using copyright <laughs> stuff. Can't use it. Sorry. And right. then game over. That's it. Like well, there's no no one's getting hurt. Like some twelve year old kid isn't getting sued for a bunch of million dollars <laughs> just because he had let the bodies hit the floor. And montage <laughs> that's actually one that's allowed on YouTube. Download. So, so uh, I, I actually looked it up one time in like in 2014, I believe it was, there was only 19 fair use copyright uh, lawsuits in all of the country. 19 is a very small number. For how many people abuse for in the country? Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, the <laughs> reason like why ridiculously small. And the reason why is because it takes a lot of money, a lot of court, case, like, if every uh, recording company were to take people to task over unfair use, mm -hmm. like they'd probably lose money. They'd probably lose money. <laughs> yeah, they would lose money. Uh, and those cases, like, oftentimes you're right, they ended up in like million dollar lawsuits. So I don't know. Just play it safe. Get copyright permissions. I had a buddy of mine shoot a dope video in Australia, and. He, he got it pulled from Facebook. He hit a million views on Facebook, and then they got copyright pinged. And so what all music that, did he use? Did he use, like, uh, he used or... uh, what's the, it's like, uh, do you recall not long ago, blah, 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 blah. Oh, blah, yeah, blah. Lean On. I love yeah, that song. Yeah, yeah, he used, So he used that song, like, the week it came out. Straight up ripped it. Yeah, you guys don't see it right now, but a fist bump just occurred. <laughs> but that like, shit was tight. Yeah, it was tight. It was tight. If there was poop, it would be very, really tight. Right now. What? What? Uh, <laughs> not... He said the shit was tight. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. get with the times, Gus. You're so 2000 late. <laughs> we, need, we need sound effects. So we need like a soundboard. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! But yeah, I, I want to be in a radio show. Like you must have had a great time doing radio. Oh, I had the best time doing radio. <laughs> oh my god! I just I talking loved... about radio now. Let's keep it going. <laughs> they they were like, "You're gonna join the Marine Corps. We're gonna give you money to just yell at people and play music all day, and we're gonna put a TV up so when there's a game on, you can just watch it. We'll give you money. Have a nice time." Like, wow. It's like awesome. Why'd you stop doing that job? Because they made me. Because <laughs> they said, you're not in radio anymore. And I went, no. Uh, that would suck. That, that didn't look like a cake job. Like, not, even, not to say it was easy, but I mean, the perks of it. No, it was awesome. And, <laughs> no, like, it was easy. <laughs> it was easy. I just go on the air. I, I shit on Creed for a little bit. <laughs> and then I just talk about random stuff and put it to like epic, like classical music and or sometimes rap over like you guys know that Chappelle shows like I'm gonna piss on you thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I did versions of that. You know. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, I could have so gotten a lot of trouble. That is <laughs> pretty much pretty much watch the movie uh, Good Morning Vietnam when you have yeah. yeah. that show. That's the yeah that's the show that you can be whatever you want to be, kids. If you want to join the Marine Corps and be a radio host, you can do that. It's great. It's great. <laughs> It's uh, not guaranteed, though. It's <laughs> <laughs> Yo, it's Just not saying. guaranteed. Yeah. Especially if you go open contract. <laughs> yeah, you're going to be really good cooking rice. Uh, so, Isaac, we had him on the last uh, podcast. He talked about how initially he was open contract, got his citizenship, and then ended up going public affairs. Uh, he gave us a brief description about his, like, his time living in Israel. And he mentioned to me earlier that he really wants to join the Israeli defense force forces yes yeah. force force so tell us a little bit about that so pretty much i joined the marine corps i originally wanted to join the israeli defense force but i was in the united states my family was going through like some financial issues and it was going to take me a lot of money to ship me over to pretty much israel this year for two years so i was like screw it i joined the marine corps and then i realized wait after i get out i can go join the israeli defense force so I'm going through the process right now and pretty much I denied getting my citizenships like rejected and stuff like that <laughs> so that way I can as soon as they draft until you're 26 years old so all I have to do is enter the country as a citizen and, and they'll scoop good. me up yeah wow. and um, as soon as that's happen that's happening 
I'm pretty much gonna go in there. And I would like a more infantry type job when I when I go in there. But maybe because of my prior like public affairs, who knows what. what they have a there. robust public yeah, affairs they system. Do. They have got a solid video team. Great. If you guys have a chance, check out the propaganda coming out of the Israeli Defense Force because it is spot on. They know how to do it. Yeah. Dude, like honestly, like I watched like their Facebook and like they are ruthless too. Like, I yep. mean, as John mentioned, you kind of have to be when you're surrounded on all sides by people that want to kill you. They, they like throw up like straight up facts and they're like at the end, they're like, their hashtags are like, Kill all the areas. Yes. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, yes. Wait, what? Yeah. Like it's. Not, I mean, like that's a little, that's a little crazy. Like, oh, oh my god! Yeah. It's not that bad, but like, dude, it is extremely, yeah. extremely. They, they, they target kill. them yeah. specifically. Like they'll they'll name drop. Yeah. And I think what's cool about that is because they'll upload videos about raiding houses. You know how with um when you do like special forces in the Marine Corps. You don't really get to see that footage where they're like busting right. the doors and, and they're like, like actually killing people. Hostage. Yeah, no, 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 no. That up like every day, like right like, or twice a week at least of like special forces going in to like get some uh, terrorists. That's the difference between the the United States and their public affairs system is like you have to see that stuff through live leak. And yeah. in the Israeli Defense Force, like, just go to their Instagram. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, and straight up. like, they'll, they'll mute the audio, and you know when they're killing somebody because they'll cut that out. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty crazy. So so that's what Isaac wants to do. Uh, that's literally crazy. Like, <laughs> like, like, that's pretty crazy. Like, no, that's, that's pretty far out. That's wild. Yeah, what does your girlfriend think about that? His girlfriend is um, also a uh, Lance Corporal, right? No, she's a corporal. She's a corporal now, yeah. and she's public NCO. affairs? She is, yeah. Nice. She, it's, I don't know, it's kind of hard, like, for her, She's because... She's probably going to get cut out, too. She <laughs> for, for his request. Right. She, she supported me, because she knows how... I've wanted to do this since I was a little kid, you know? Like, right, right. this for me, this is more than just, like, serving my country, because religiously, I'm Jewish. They're, they're literally attacking my people. Mm. How am I just going to, like, sit here and let that happen, you know? So, I want to... I can't just... I don't like living with regrets, so for me to go there, that's something that I have to do. That's no something regrets. that I was, yeah. But no, that funny misspelled. Yeah, so yeah. what's yeah. interesting yeah. to me yeah. is, so you probably joined the Marine Corps with a little bit of uh, ignorance to the fact that, like, of like what it was going to be, right? Right. <clears throat> Knowing what the Marine Corps is. I think there's five people sitting at this table. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're yeah. the Marine Corps with a little bit of ignorance of what it was actually going to be like. That's very true. So, like, <laughs> knowing what the Marine Corps, what you thought it was and then what it was when you got in, how has that altered your opinion of, of joining the IDF? Of like what you think it's gonna be and like what it actually might be. And I've thought about that too because obviously I bet you some people go in and like all they do is clean pretty much. Yeah, right. But I mean over there the state that they're in, I've had friends that have served for like eight years that serve there right now. And the actually my best friend when I was in Israel, I would I was gonna join with him. That was a plan because I never knew I was gonna move to to the United States. And I um, recently talked to him and I was like, dude, that's crazy. Like, I'm over here in the, in the Marine Corps now and you're over there. Like, what's it like? And he's like, that's cool. He's, I'm just a, a gate guard. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. And <laughs> But not really. I was like, oh, that kind of sucks. And he's like, yeah, but I don't know. Like, he's been, like, um, getting shot at. And he had some one guy try to, like, stab him. And he just laughs, laughs about it because that's life over there. Wow. When I was, when I was a little kid... I mean, shootings and stuff like that, like bombing, bomb threats and stuff like that is, is normal. But when you see the people over there, it's, they don't live in fear because it's part of their life. It's like an everyday thing. And that's why I feel like if I go over there and going with military training and stuff like that, they'll know that putting me in a position to where I can go into combat is, is going to make sense because I'm already, I already have physically fit standards because of the Marine Corps and stuff like that. Going in, I think they're, gonna, they're not going to put me at a desk job, that's for sure. And I talk to my friends, like recruiters, they're like, so what are my chances of actually like going out and fighting for my country? And they're like, well, pretty good. <laughs> like I have, um, I can potentially go with special forces. That's not, I don't know if that's something I want to do, but going there, I feel like at least I'll, I will contribute into something because it's such a small country and community. I feel like everybody that's in the Israeli Defense Force, no matter what they're doing, they're actually pushing to defend like that hmm. small piece of land, you know. Well, yeah. Well, uh, we'll catch up with you in a couple of years and see what you think. Yeah, that'd be interesting. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm not, I'm not gonna be like. I'm gonna be so very. Did you kill anyone? <laughs> yeah. 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 Gonna, yeah. No, so and, how many people did you kill, bro? Like, and one thing, because if I go into an infantry job, I love videography, I love photography, and I want to continue that. That's yeah. why I bought 
your camera. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I totally scammed this guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I bought this like ten dollar Polaroid, pawned it off on for a thousand bucks. <laughs> but I still. <laughs> <laughs> But I want to pretty much use my storytelling skills to tell like my story of whatever I find myself doing over there. Like continue yeah, just like um, starting like my own little blog or whatever. You should like, start a YouTube. Yeah, That'd start be dope. A YouTube. I'm sure people would people would view that. That's for yeah. sure. Man, well, that's crazy. We've gone everywhere from memories. Memes. Yeah, memes. Legend memes. of Zelda. Memory. The Constitution. Gun control. What's memes? Memories. <laughs> M16s. Is the M16 getting phased out for the M4? And which do you prefer, M4 or M16? I get that question um, all the time. I've never fired the M4, so I, I can't fire speak to it. I fired an M4, oh, and I'm going to let you know, it's exactly like the M16, but smaller, so I'd rather carry that. Yeah, right. a lot <laughs> of people sense. say that the kick from it, or not the kick, but the barrel control, whatever. It, that's, like, pretty much, think about this from a standpoint where you're not, like, the amount of time you're going to be holding that thing and carrying that thing and cleaning that thing and then as far a, outweighs you actually shooting it. Exactly. By, like, by a margin of, like, 0.18th <laughs> of a percent, like, right. you're going to be shooting, the rest of the time you're going to be holding it. Right. And it's a smaller piece of gear you have to keep accountability for. And a lot of people don't I'm gonna know. Take, I'm going to take accountability for this smaller piece of thing that is lighter in my hands. Right. And, like, isn't as big. A lot of people don't know that in the Marine Corps and, and pretty much every other fighting organization we have is that you shoot your gun in, in, on single burst, like, you, almost and all the time. I, there's, I've there's, actually, like, I remember, like, like, I joined the Marine Corps thinking, like, every weapon's automatic because of Call of Duty. <laughs> <laughs> like, unless, yeah. Except the M16, M16, three-round three burst. burst. Every noob knows that, bro. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then I joined the Marine Corps, and I was like, okay, they're all semi-auto. Right. All right. So, like, I got that understanding, and then... Like a year ago, I was hanging out with Recon. Their M4s are actually full auto, and they let me shoot it on full auto. So I was like, finally, my Call of Duty fantasy coming out. And then like I got to shoot the M4 on full auto. It was empty a magazine. It was awesome. Yeah. Mm. Check dude, it out on my Instagram. <clears throat> when I did the Recon, uh, by, last summer when I was with the Recon dudes out in Pendleton, mm -hmm. dude, they had this setup going. They had they had snipers, pistols, M4s, every freaking gun in their arsenal lined up on like tables, and it was. It's pretty sick to be on the range with them and just like they're oh, like, yeah. yeah, you want? They just be casual. Yeah, you want to shoot this? I'm like, uh, yeah, like I had, I had one yeah. of my buddies. He like he walked out to me and he goes, he's like, hey, take my pistol. And I was like, okay. Yeah, it was crazy. And then like, dude, they're just be, like flagging the line. Uh, we, I feel like every episode we somehow find out, talk, find a way to talk. Oh, about I need to give guys. a shout out to my buddy Steve. He listened to the last episode and he was sad that he was not mentioned. So this one's for you, Steve. What Steve do? Steve, he's that radio operator I mentioned when we did the live stream. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Steve's a dick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Steve can go straight to hell. <laughs> uh, no, he's, he's, he's a good guy. Uh, but yeah, he was part of the Force Recon team. He's a real cool guy. Cool. I'd like to give a shout out to him. Well, on that, we're going to end it on Steve for the night. Steve, we hope you're listening. Steve, this episode's for you. Yeah. And we're going to play you out with a little bit of Seinfeld music. <laughs> Have a good night, Steve. We will see you next time. <laughs> I can see you, yes, I can.